ChatGPT Agent is out. It combines OpenAI's deep research, their operator agent, and the intelligence of ChatGPT to allow you to automate everyday tasks. Now, with every launch, there are a lot of big claims. This is insane. This is nuts. Wow, it's changed everything. But is it any good? Well, on this show, we will always put these things through its paces live for all of you to see. And we're going to have ChatGPT Agent do three marketing and growth tasks live on this episode, showing you prompts and all. And we're going to see, really, is ChatGPT Agent another great tool for everyone to use to be able to be way more productive, way more successful, way more efficient? On this episode, you're going to find out all of that and more on this episode. It's Marketing Against the Green. Okay, so ChatGPT Agent is out with every great launch. There is a steady stream of big claims made, especially if you hang about on X or YouTube. And so I've started to play around with it. Now, it combines ChatGPT's deep research, which is a great product, its ability to do tasks via operator, and then just the intelligence of ChatGPT all in one agent. And we've heard forever that this is the year of agents. I do believe that will come true at some point. A lot of agents out there have really not met the needs uh, of users. We're really still trying to have agents be as good as we want them to be. And so is this a major breakthrough? Is ChatGPT figured out how to create an agent that can really start to automate tasks, not just retrieve information, but actually take action on that information and do things for us? This is the future we have been promised. Now, now like any good launch these days, the benchmarks come out along with the launch and they always look really good. So ChatGPT agent here on Humanity's last exam, where it's able to do expert level questions across different subjects. Wow, looks really, really good. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, this is the one that really, I think, matters a lot, which is its ability to create tasks or do tasks measured against humans' abilities to do that. They estimate time for a human to complete tasks. And you can see ChatGPT agent is really starting to uh, show signs that it can do tasks and is comparable to a human. I think one of the stats I heard is it was around 50, it, it was about better in 50% of the cases than the average human. Uh, it's pretty good at financial things. I actually wouldn't mind uh, trying this one out, which is investment banking model and tasks. When you look at the benchmarks, each new launch does come with a set of benchmarks and those benchmarks look really, really good. And so you would say, wow, this is uh, an incredible tool. I really need to start to use that. Now what ChatGPT is, and I'm going to, Agent is, and I'm going to show you quickly some use cases. We're going to demo it here live. It provides the agent with a virtual computer to do all of these tasks. So the, the agent has access to tools like web browsing and these different tools, has access, and it has the ability to complete tasks within that virtual computer. And the UX experience is actually really, really nice. Uh, and so let's kind of get into the first task, and I can bring you through that. Okay, so I think this is like one of the more common tasks. It is very much tied into like deep research. It's a very, like a lot of the research task use cases are, is still very heavily reliant on the deep research, which is part of the agent's uh, tool set. But this one here is going to allow us to create a competitive matrix from 10 co companies' competitors. So we're going to give it a domain. In this case, we'll just give it HubSpot. And then we're going to research 10 closest competitors. We're going to go to their website visit all of these different pages. Then we're going to build a competitive matrix. Then we're going to highlight any gaps or opportunities not covered by these competitors because we've been on their website. And we're going to output this in a structured table. And we have some constraints and then we have an output format. So this is a pretty good one. Like, you know, in days gone past, how long would it take someone to build a competitive matrix? It would have taken your competitive analysis team or your product marketing team some amount of time to be able to do this. And so we are going to switch on the agent mode. And you can see it down here, it has, has like some suge suggestions of what I can do. You can see a lot of them are like everyday tasks, reserve tables, catch up on team conversations, order pizzas, audit fashion, fast fashion versus okay. Schedule grocery delivery for tomorrow. So like, I need to look at that one. I didn't know you could schedule tasks because that would be pretty cool. But first of all, let's, I think let's run this one and see how it gets. I want to show you the UX. We're going to kick this off. And you can see it's going to bring up its little virtual computer, which is very, very cool. So it sets up its desktop, turn on, turn on its laptop. Sometimes it has to turn it on and off if it's not working the way it wants it to work, just like all of us. Okay, so I really like this. So you can see it has its little virtual computer and you can see that it's starting to actually do these tasks, go into Zendesk. I love, I, I think this is a really slick UX experience. 
The other thing is you can take you can have you can take over the browser and so you can actually interject here. All right, so you can you have these little options here. You can uh, switch between this mode and see the little uh, screens here, or you can switch back to desktop mode. You could take over the browser, which I'm not going to do because I want it to run this. So again, uh, I actually think this is very, very, very cool. Let's let this run and then come back to come back to see what the results are. Now again, well, what I'm actually going to do is because this is the future we do live in is I'm going to kick off the other two as well at the same time. So we're not going to slow down here. So Let's actually kick off some more. Let's try to use all, all of our credits in one go and kick off some more things here. And so I'll switch to a different screen. You're, you're watching one of my workers at work. Let's kick off another virtual worker because this really is... Uh, the future we are going to live in where we're just going to have a bunch of virtual agents doing a bunch of stuff for us. So we have one going there. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you, which I think is a interesting one. It's still another research one, but actually I think is a, is an interesting one to see. I actually don't know how this one will work because what I'm asking it to do is reverse engineer an ideal customer profile by analyzing real LinkedIn profiles. And so I'm wondering, does it have access to LinkedIn profiles? What it's going to do is reverse engineer the customer profile for CMOs in the United States, analyze real LinkedIn profiles. It's going to identify uh, five chief marketing officer profiles working in the US, preferably B2B SaaS. It's going to then take all of that data, analyze those things, and then start to create a actual ICP. That is a pretty good way if you are a smaller company and you want to be really scrappy to create a first version of your ICP is actually pull a bunch of LinkedIn profiles which are people you would but you would uh, sell your product to and put them into one of the AI tools and have it build an ideal customer profile. So for people following along an ideal customer profile is this is the fictional representation of the people we actually want to sell our products to, we want to market our services to. It actually helps me tailor my entire strategy towards a specific person, towards a specific, you know, demographic. And so this is a really good way, I think, to create a first version of your ideal customer profile. And we are going to kick this one off. We go agent. My other little worker is working away here. And so why don't we kick off our third? All right, the third one is like close to my heart because I am a, a, a fan of a tool that I use a lot called GenSpark. And GenSpark is a AI agent that is able to craft really great presentations. Now, one of the things that we saw in the demo for ChatGPT agent that was front and center as a dem as a use case was its ability to craft slides. And I want to put it through its paces along with uh, GenSpark. And so I'll run this prompt in OpenAI's ChatGPT agent, and I'll also run it in GenSpark, and we'll see which of those tools does the best job. GenSpark is an AI agent. It has a lot of different a function fun agents. One of them is to, allows you to create presentations. So I'm going to show you that as well. And so let's uh, kick off another little worker. Got my own virtual team. Again, I do think the whatever you think about the results, think about the way that I'm working because this is how we're going to work in the future. This is how we are going to manage work. All right. So you are a competitive presentation specialist. We're going to research. We're going to create a competitive analysis presentation. So again, kind of similar to the other ones because we want to continue to use the core functionality like deep research, its ability to craft that information into things and take action. And so in this, we are going to actually have it craft a competitive deck on HubSpot. Again, one of the use cases here that if this worked really well is in the future, you would have one of these created for target accounts for sales, right? So sales would be a contact would come in, sales would qualify, we would qualify that sales would create a deal and you would automatically kick off an agent to create a deck around that target account. So that's these use cases can all be integrated into your go-to-market in some way. And so we're going to kick off this one here, which I'm asking it to do an executive summary, which is two to three sentences and then some slides. Yes. So these, these are the slides here. I give it a kind of, I did give it a structure. And so we will turn on our agent mode. Let's kick this off. And we have a third agent. And what I'll do is I will also show you me kicking it off in GenSpark. Let me just log in first. All right, so this is GenSpark. Okay, so we're going to give it the same prompt and let's kick off GenSpark. Okay, so we have four 
different agents running. Let's first dive into the one where it took the LinkedIn profiles. Okay, so I can see this is what I wanted to do, right? I can see um, I can see here the actual chief marketing officers and how it's pulling those LinkedIn profiles. Okay, so so it's pulled the uh, CMOs that we wanted to pull. So we have some CMOs here. Gives you some patterns, which are pretty cool. Then it gives me an ideal customer profile. So it talks about company size, talks about the industries, talks about key responsibilities, pain points, common goals, buy and triggers. Cool. Preferred tools, their decision making power. CMOs have significant budget for marketing software and services, but often collaborate, yes. Message and tone that resonates. And so it gives you some message and tone. Then how do you position your product for these CMOs? But pretty cool, right? The, the other one I think uh, is cool is that they went to visit all of your target competitors. And so we have the different competitors it went to see, Salesforce, Zoho, ActiveCampaign, MailChimp, Adobe, all of these different competitors. It visited their website. So it's pulled out a ton of information here, features, pricing, positioning. This is super cool, actually. It's pulled the positioning. So it can go to the website and pull all of the positions. So that is awesome. Then it goes, who are the target audience? It's got me the target audience for all of these competitors. And then the differentiators. Well, I could play around with this forever, actually, to pull out some more information around competitors in different ways. Sweet. So it's done a pretty good job here. Hey, if you're watching the show, this is a really awesome opportunity to come and hang out with us in person at Inbound 2025. VCs aren't the only ones cutting checks to AI founders right now. HubSpot Media just launched the next big AI Dia, a pitch competition for early stage AI companies. Submit a 60 second video about what you're building. That's it, 60 seconds. And the finalists will pitch live on stage at Inbound 2025. And one winner walks away with 50 grand plus a ton of promo and exposure across HubSpot's media network, reaching millions of marketers, operators, founders, decision makers. It's going to be pretty amazing. No pitch deck, no intros, no strings, just your idea in a one minute video. If you're building something really cool, we want to see it. Submissions close July 25th. The link is down in the show notes and in the description. Let's get into our last one, which is still ongoing, which is the big one, the presentation against GenSpark. But we should go over to see what GenSpark is doing. Okay, GenSpark, look at look at uh, GenSpark go. What a great tool. I'm sorry, but I think OpenAI is going to struggle to get anywhere, anywhere near as good as this. Look at this. Look at this. Kudos to GenSpark. Look at this. This is, how good is this for a pretty, even my, my, Oh God, this is so good. And this is kind of blowing my brain. How good I use, I use Janspark all the time. And I'm just kind of, my brain is a little bit melting here. How good this is. Uh, this actually is kind of like Janspark for presentation is a little bit like replit or lovable for code. They, it's just figured out how to do it. And no other uh, agents have really figured out how to do it. And if you're a mar if you're a marketer and you're not using this tool, like you, you're probably like if you're a marketer in a big enough company, you're doing like presentations all the time. What a time save this is, right? Like who 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 wants to spend their time doing lots of presentations versus actually doing the craft? But it's a great way to like communicate things, and so they are needed. But like the like the other thing, just to just so we're clear, GenSpark pulled all of this itself. I just asked it to go and research these things. Like this here is like so good. I didn't give it that information. Uh, I didn't even give it that information. This this was this our spotlight is a, is a big is a big part of our year where we launched a lot of different products, and I'm trying to figure out where it got that from. Like it's so good. I'm mostly just doing an advert for GenSpark now. Please, GenSpark. Uh, I need to get the founder on. If anyone watches this and has a contact with the founder, please, uh, please, 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 please let me know. All right, so after a good 45 minutes, it is back with a presentation. And so this is what it has. Now, it's still kind of cool that it even did this, right? Like, uh, so HubSpot competitive analysis has my agenda. HubSpot at a glance, all financial here. You know, it's, it's uh, look, if you, if you had given us this months ago before we have tools like GenSpark, this would seem pretty cool. Giving me the financial, it's giving me competitor feature comparison against AI and automation, pricing, ecosystem, SMB. So it's giving me 
some like feature comparisons here to other other companies. Give me a little SWOT analysis here, which is kind of cool. Give me some market gaps and opportunities, some strategic recommendations, uh, and adoption and appendix. What is this? So for 45 minutes, I don't think you're saving that much time, right? Uh, compared to Janspark, which was like less than five minutes. So it, it, it still has a ways to go, I think, for some tasks, for sure. But I think one of the things I would take from this episode, so we went through three use cases. It's pretty good. Again, a lot of it, the goodness is coming from its deep research tool, which is just a great product. I have not put it through its paces as much on how to create action. We did that once to create a deck, which is a very common use case for marketers and knowledge workers. It took 45 minutes to be able to do that. That's a long, long time, comparable to tools like GenSpark. And so I, I still think these tools have a ways to go. But they are making progress. And what I would take away from this video is just the way I started to work, right? I had four virtual AI agents completing tasks in parallel for me. And so at some point, I probably could have hundreds of these things working for me. And that is just a very different type of day that I'm going to live in where I can just kick off all of these agents and they're able to do tasks. And I think what I would look at here is how much better ChatGPT agent is than operator? Like what is the difference between those two things? And then do I expect this to get much, much better over time? And I do. And so I do think it's worth playing around with it, starting to figure out where it can be useful. And then over time, assuming that it's going to get much better, or you're going to have comparable tools that are much more specialized in certain areas, like a GenSpark for presentations, where you're going to have these virtual agents be able to do things for you. So that's the Gen ChatGPT agent. I think it's cool. It has a ways to go in some ways to do like, a lot of things for you, but definitely worth digging in and starting to see where you can use it in your day to day. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better. 